guess I wouldn't really want to be living in a state or in a world where I didn't know there were mountain lions out there. I mean, to me, they're just such a majestic and important component to the ecosystem that I want to be in places where there are lions. Throughout the course of this series, we've had a first-hand look into the unique world of California mountain lions. Each episode has elaborated on many parts of puma biology, social structure, and even how this data is collected. All culminating in the final and most important question, what next? There is no doubt that apex predators are valuable to the ecosystem. Those aware of this value are less likely to act out of fear. Therefore, education is key. And in California, there are many organizations working toward the conservation and understanding of mountain lions, including the Southern California Puma Project based out of UC Davis. One of the most important things that we discovered studying the mountain lion populations down in Southern California, around Los Angeles and San Diego, was that they had a significantly higher mortality rate than we expect, given that sport hunting is not allowed in California. What we found is that most of the animals in our study area were either being killed from collisions with vehicles on highways or being shot under depredation permits for killing livestock or pets. California Fish and Wildlife, the Mountain Lion Foundation, Living with Lions, and many others, are trying to provide alternatives to depredation permits by speaking with those who've encountered a loss. There's a real challenge to bringing information to a community and creating a way for a community or a neighborhood to have a long-term solution to potential conflicts with mountain lions. There's no question that it requires effort to live in lion country. Since protecting domestic animals inevitably results in protecting mountain lions, it's a win-win situation. Living with lions, it's this need for us to learn to coexist with not only just mountain lions, but other wildlife. Because mountain lions are kind of this umbrella species in this area. And in a way, I suppose, the living with lions or the coexistence ideas can be a metaphor for us all to even, you know, coexisting with your neighbors. In rapidly developing areas such as Southern California, mountain lion populations are separated by major highways and human development. The Nature Conservancy and National Park Service are helping to connect these fragmented habitats. In the last 30 years or so, the Nature Conservancy's efforts in the Santa Ana Palomar linkage have focused on conserving key parcels in the linkage to ensure that wildlife can safely move over the long term. We've been working with California Department of Transportation and many other partners in the area to build a wildlife crossing um, across the 101 freeway, which would connect the Santa Monica Mountains to the Simi Hills to the north. We've identified the location based on over two decades of research of carnivores in the area, and it's something that's greatly needed for our local wildlife. The research may be clear, but the real question is, can we coexist with mountain lions? Humans can live with mountain lions in a number of different ways that, that help to minimize conflict and uh, especially minimize the likelihood of the animals going extinct in, in uh, certain regions. Number one is to protect their animals just as they would protect their animals from disease with vaccination. They should protect their domestic animals from predators with proper housing and proper husbandry. Number two is to be alert and aware during dawn and dusk recreation when lions are also active. So the next living with lions tip is to know what to do if you encounter a mountain lion. And so if the mountain lion doesn't immediately exit the area just from seeing a human, which is their natural thing to do, then humans should make themselves as big as possible, as loud as possible, make sure the mountain lion knows that they are not prey, they are not a deer. 
Throw things, though be careful not to crouch down, and most importantly, do not run. If children are present, pick them up and back away slowly. Mountain lions aren't looking to harm people. They just usually stay away from people because we're just too weird. You know, they see us and just go like, I don't know what that is, but I'm not going to get close to it. While lions have a lot of support from dozens of organizations, what about the public? What can an individual do to help? Do I value lions as part of my landscape, as part of my neighborhood? And for a lot of people, it's a resounding yes. But if you just ask and answer that question and you stop there, that's not going to guarantee that it's going to happen because there has to be some proactive steps taken if lions are going to persist. To be proactive in puma conservation, learn what you can do at home, in your community, and in local politics. At home, avoid using anticoagulant rodenticides, which can work their way up the food chain. There are, are some things you can do that might make your house less attractive. For example, don't leave domestic animals outside at night. In your community, talk to your neighbors and encourage action toward conservation. Just because you want lions to exist in your area, if your neighbor doesn't, then it's probably not going to work. So you need to approach this from a community level. And finally, take political action. Many policies related to mountain lions, such as development decisions, are determined at the local level. So go out and vote. Let's make policy and implement policy that represents the values that people have and that promote lion conservation. Even though mountain lions are elusive and rarely seen, most Californians want them to remain part of the ecosystem. But solving these kinds of problems is hard, while finding common ground is even harder. The next step is to take action and find a balance between ourselves and the legend of California.